please welcome Tim Burton. Director Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Timothy Walter Burton was born in Burbank, California on August 25th, 1958 to a Jean and Bill Burton. His mother, Jean, was once the owner of a cat-themed gift shop, whilst his father, Bill, was a former minor league baseball player, but then soon later retired and began to join working for the Burbank Park and Recreation Department. During his childhood, young Burton would have spent his time being recluse. He would enjoy drawing cartoons as well as watching classical movies. He would enjoy watching the old universal horror movies, starring such well-known actors like the great Bela Lugosi as the infamous Count Dracula. Burton would especially watch other classical films, starring his favourite actor and idol, Vincent Price. And nothing more. Whilst growing up, Burton would make short films or even create crude stop motion animations by shooting them on an 8mm camera without the use of sound. During his time at Burbank High School, young Burton was given a large autobiographical novel on the famous Houdini. I would make these films and like I remember I was supposed to read a book on Houdini that was about that and I, I was not a reader. I, unfortunately that was the one part of the growing up in this sort of television generation I wasn't, didn't read as much as I probably should have or would have liked to have got most of it through film. So I did a little short film, me as Houdini escaping from a train track or a, a, you know, a, swimming pool and uh, you know had fun doing it and got a, an A you know a great grade so I found it was a great way of getting a good grade with and having fun at the same time. At the age of 13 Burton directed his first animated film called The Island of Dr. Agor which Burton had written and adapted from the famous story The Island of Dr. Morale by science fiction writer H.G. Wells. Burton had made that in 1971. Young Burton wasn't considered to be the perfect stereotypical student. He would often be described as an introspective person, meaning that he would examine another person's own state of mental and emotional process. Soon, after Burton graduated from Burbank High School, he eventually attended the California Institute of Arts in Valencia. During his time there, Burton studied character animation. In 1979, Burton managed to animate two short animated films, The Stalk of the Celery Monster and King and Octopus. It was his work on The Stalk of the Celery Monster that led Burton to get an animator's apprenticeship at the Walt Disney Productions Animation Department. When working at Disney, Burton worked as an animator, storyboard artist, Hi, Tim. and even concept artist. Whilst working at Disney, here. Burton helped on such other animated drawing. films as The Fox and the Hound, The Black Cauldron, and Tron. However, none of his work ever made it into the complete films. Whilst at Disney Animation, Burton managed to work alongside other future director and animators that are well known. Some such as Don Bluth, who would later on animate more mature animations, like An American Tale and Thumbelina. Young Burton would even have the privilege to work with the future CEO to Pixar Animation Studios, John Lasseter. Apart from working on animated films, Burton worked on his own personal set of projects. Another project. project that Tim and I worked on together was an experiment with stop motion animation for which uh, I took Tim's designs and created puppets in three dimensional sets. It, it's basically the story of a, of a little boy who thinks that he's Vincent Price. And um, it was initially a children's book, but uh, Rick and I made it then into a film. The most well known of his short film productions is Vincent. 
and the short live-action version of Frankenweenie in 1984. Vincent was Burton's first stop-motion animation film that he made over at Disney. Unfortunately, all of this would come to an end. Soon, after the completion of his live-action short, Frankenweenie, Burton was fired from Disney under the pretext of him spending too much of the company's resources on doing a film that would be too dark and scary for children to watch. However, in 1985, Burton's luck was about to change as the actor Paul Rubens saw Vincent in Frankenweenie and had chosen Burton to direct his cinematic spin-off of his popular character, Pee Wee Herman. Burton's first feature-length film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, had a budget estimate of $6 million, then soon grossed out $40 million in the US. Very soon, during the development of the newly formed director, Burton persuaded the talented singer and songwriter Danny Elfman to provide the quirky soundtrack for the film's production. Who is Danny Elfman? We shall find out. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Elfman's career started off with him becoming the lead singer to the American New Wave band, Oingo Boingo. The band was well known by their best known hits, such as Weird Science and Dead Man's Party. Elfman and the band led their career from 1976 on up until 1995, where they retired suddenly. However, Danny Elfman is unknowingly famous for composing the most iconic theme in TV history. He wrote The Simpsons piece in 1989, and it has been used for the family animated show ever since. And speaking of rock bands and music, apart from making full-length films and short film productions, in 2006, Burton filmed his first music video for the song called Bones by the American indie rock band The Killers. Burton did it again in 2012 for The Killers as he made the music video for the song Here With Me starring the actress Winona Ryder. Soon, after directing a few episodes of the revitalized version of the 50s, 60s anthology horror series Alfred Hitchcock Presents and Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theatre, Burton began working on his next full-length feature film, uh, well, I to Juliet, Beetlejuice. I with Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. The film grossed out a number of 80 million in the box office. As time went on, Burton started oozing out more and more films each and every year, each with their own Let's unique signature that relates to director Tim Burton. He brought darkness to the Don't Dark Knight, the Batman, in 1989 and Batman good. Returns in 1992. He made our mouths drool with the recreation of Roald Dahl's classic, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in 2005. And he even made Halloween the second greatest holiday season to Christmas, in exactly The Nightmare Before Christmas. Normal. In 1993. In 1990, Burton directed the most iconic film that he had ever made, Edward Scissorhands. It was during the development of this film that Burton's relationship with a young Johnny Depp became very much respected. Depp describes that himself and Burton have a both similar outlook and understanding on things as well as a similar sense of humour. It is up until this present day that Burton appreciates Depp and other actors to dress up and change character for his films. However, the most important relationship began when Burton was shooting the re-imaging of the sci-fi classic 
Planet of the Apes, in the starting of the new millennia. It was during the filming of this project that Burton fell into a relationship with the English actress Helena Bonham Carter. That didn't sound like the beginning of a romance. Well, for me it was, actually. Oh. I was in Australia doing a film. No one saw that one, but I liked it. But anyway, and then he phoned <laughs> up saying, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm directing this film, Planet of the Aids. Hi, it's Tim Burton here. It was in the middle of the night, because Australia in the time, but never mind. Cut to the chase. And, um, <laughs> and he said, uh, yeah, don't take this wrong way, but you are the first person I thought of to play a chimpanzee. <laughs> and but for me, I thought, God, he's never met me, but he's, he's got me. Soon, after the loving couple had had two children together, unfortunately, after starring in six films directed by Burton, Carter and Burton sadly announced their separation on December 23, 2014. This sad separation never stopped Burton though, as he was already working his next full-length feature film, based on the novel by Ransom Riggs, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. On September 30th, right 2016, audiences from across the nation in different countries around the world will once again witness the true brilliance and utter talent of Tim Burton as he brings this peculiar story to life. Go, go, get out, get out! How do you do? During the film's release, we asked viewers and audience members about their experience watching this peculiar film. Well, first of all, what did you, uh, why did you consider watching it? Well, I'm a great um, Tim um, Burton fan. I think I love his work, yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. What is the most interesting thing that you found about the film? I think the monsters. I just thought it was fantastic. Absolutely not expecting it. Thought I was going to sleep. <laughs> just thought it was absolutely fantastic and can't wait for a sequel. Was it what you were expecting? It's a bit more scary than I was expecting, mm, even given definitely. the rating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, a few children left and mm. <laughs> towards the end. Yeah, well, father was with them, I think, but uh, it was a bit scary. Yeah. So we're just saying we know Tim Burton can, you know, he's sort of yeah, he's got he, that sort of style, but yeah, it's a lot of, uh, quite a lot of violence, I think, yeah. Would you recommend it to friends or family? Yeah, definitely, yeah. What rating would you give this film? Ten. Ten out of ten. Absolutely. Oh, it is a challenge for you. Can you list any of any other Tim Burton films that you've directed by? Oh, good one. Did you do the Alice in Wonderland ones? Yeah, the oh. recent ones with Johnny Depp and yeah. You can see, she goes to cinema <laughs> more than me. <laughs> um, you know, if you said them, I probably would know, but. Uh, well, I know Edward, uh, Edward Scissorhands and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, can't remember what those. Shadow Bride. Corpse Bride. Go, yes, yeah, yeah. Corpse Bride. Yes. Oh uh, God! What, did, what he did with? Oh God! Johnny Depp. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. Was that him? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, yeah that was fantastic too. We liked that. Um, oh, Edward Scissorhands. Didn't he do? Yeah. He did that. yeah. Uh, can you think of any more? No. 